Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening everyone. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today uh, on today's session which is uh, about CloudBerry Backup version 5.8 uh, which, uh, which has been released recently and we have plenty of features that we want to explain uh, today and show you in action and also you know give you details how you can address uh, those features uh, with uh, regards to your current configuration. Uh, my name is Eugene. Um, I'm working at um, Solution Architect Department and basically uh, the department where I am is responsible for all technical inquiries that you may have with uh, regards to the product configuration or um, you know cloud stack configuration or with uh, regard to integration of our product uh, with uh, cloud or vice versa. And um, so here is a quick agenda that we're gonna uh, walk through today. So basically, I will start with uh, um, what's new. So basically, we'll walk through uh, four key features that we uh, recently released. Um, so the first key feature is ransomware, and then change block tracking for VMware. And then we're gonna uh, look into disk capacity tool, and finally we're gonna, uh, you know, walk through the uh, restore of image-based backup into um, Amazon or Azure Cloud, and uh, you know the virtual machines that are available, and the uh, changes with uh, regards to the um, disk size. And then there will be a demo. Um, I'll show you 5.8. Um, so if you haven't got a chance to uh, look into the product, um, make sure you stay till the end because you're going to see the product itself and uh, you know all these key things that uh, we're going to discuss today. And uh, you know before we uh, start talking about the you know uh, key functionality that we introduced earlier, uh, I'd like to highlight some administrative things. So first of all, uh, please make sure that you see Q&A box. So the Q&A box allows you to um, raise your questions or uh, put your comments or you know if, you, if something is not clear uh, and you want to clarify that topic with uh, us, so just use the Q&A box and uh, I'll try to uh, address your inquiry. Uh, the other thing is that we are recording this session, um, so we're gonna put that session somewhere um, in YouTube channel and uh, we'll follow up with uh, you know some of the details how to review this uh, once again uh, if you, um, you know didn't have chance to sit here until the end the entire session so you will be able to walk through this session again and um, yeah and uh, also the content that we are showing today is going to be shared as well so uh, let's actually you know uh, start with uh, the first feature uh, that we introduced is actually ransomware and uh, so first of all I'd like to talk a little bit about ransomware and uh, what exactly and uh, you know where exactly you can see the ransomware so first of all it's all about encryption and it's all about your data that you keep on the um, you know storage sets that you keep on your computers that you keep on your customers computers and if you catch ransomware um, you might be in trouble because you know it can affect your files or even the entire system. So there are various you know options available from ransomware perspective. It can be uh, you know targeting your uh, you know individual files or even the entire system when it works on the uh, volume level when you uh, get the uh, you know like MFT uh, encrypted and uh, you know there is no chance to use those. Um, you know those, those things later uh, where you keep your uh, data uh, where you keep your customers data as well and usually um, so what are your options in terms of uh, getting back your uh, data you either you know go ahead and uh, follow the instructions uh, that you actually get from the attackers so usually you talk about you know bitcoins or any other crypto uh, currency and you basically go ahead and pay for that, like what they call ransom. So basically you pay and then you get the decrypt, decrypt, decryptor key. And uh, here is the thing, like you may get the valid decryptor key that helps you to restore your data and then you can get all your files back and you know, like you probably learn something from that case and then next time uh, you will be more 
um, you know, smart in terms of uh, catching those trojans or viruses and affecting your system. Uh, the other, you know, from the other hand, you may see the situation when you pay ransom, but you actually get wrong uh, decryption key, and that's actually uh, very, uh, you know, quite often because we uh, see that, you know, in the forums and, uh, you know, in different resources in the internet, so people were paying for ransom, um, but they actually uh, got either nothing at all or they got the wrong decryption key, and again, they are in trouble because they can't really get back data. Uh, they are still encrypted, and you know they just wasted their money. So um, we actually uh, made the ransomware protection thing. Um, so we're going to be talking in demo parts uh, what exactly uh, we do specifically for files or for volumes uh, in terms of uh, you know encryption, in terms of ransom encryption. Um, so how we calculate the entropy and uh, you know the changes within files uh, locally and how we address that and basically we give you a warning message into the UI so uh, that's going to be in a demo part so the next um, uh, the next thing uh, that I really uh, want to um, um, you know to introduce um, based on the 5.8 release is a change block tracking for VMware um, not sure how many of you are using VMware uh, and uh, using our virtual machine edition for uh, virtual machine backup, but that's a really cool feature in terms of uh, you know incremental backup. So uh, how and what exactly it gives you from the um, you know from the backup perspective? So first of all, it's all about the incremental part. So when you uh, get your full backup done and uh, all the uh, all the next runs that you have with uh, your VM virtual machines and your virtual machine backups, uh, it's all about incremental unless you want to uh, run full backup because uh, you have some certain retention policy that actually uh, pushes that type of uh, backup infrastructure. So when you uh, do incremental backup on daily basis or weekly basis, uh, it's it's you know it's all about the changes, right? So it's all about the changed blocks within your virtual machines. And uh, you know, before uh, flood the date, uh, we used to uh, do a manual uh, loop, um, you know, through uh, through the through the blocks of virtual machine that we actually are backing up right now. And um, so we actually compare the change blocks with uh, the data that you have in the cloud or in your local destination. And uh, once we see those changes, we just simply pick them up and copy to the storage. So right now, um, with uh, flood the date. Uh, we can actually retrieve that data directly from VMware or over uh, vSphere API. So, uh, you know, one, Im imagine that you are doing a backup of virtual machines. So, once the full backup is done and you're looking at the incremental part, which is the next day, so uh, one of the call uh, that we do towards VMware is actually called to retrieve the CBT or uh, change block tracking table uh, that contains actually uh, the parts of your virtual machine disk where changes occurred and we just simply pick them up and deliver it to the cloud. So, uh, in other words, like simply saying that actually gives you uh, much faster backup. We didn't have chance to, um, you know, to make, uh, you know, different tests compared uh, to the native, um, to the native, our, our own uh, technology for, um, you know, for incremental backup, but I think uh, it's roughly uh, from 10 up to 20% faster incremental backup. So, if you have VMware, if you have, uh, you know, like a backup challenges, if you need to uh, to backup your VMware, I really encourage you to uh, take a look at your uh, at your VMware configuration with us and uh, try five to eight. All right, um, and that's actually a, you know a few pictures that you can see here. Um, you know, uh, like on the right picture, incremental backup uh, with incremental backup, we see all those changes blocks and we just deliver them to the. Uh, storage immediately because we can get a table of change blocks directly from VMA. So the other very small feature uh, that we added, and it's uh, just representation of your uh, of your disk capacity. Um, so basically, uh, it's the tool uh, that shows you um, you know the, uh, the the breakdown of your folders and and its sizes on the computer. Uh, as, you, as you can see in the screenshot, we see uh, there are files and folders in the C drive, and uh, it actually gives me the size, uh, the number of files and folders. Uh, it's it's so I mean I think it's really handy in terms of uh, 
you know, configuring uh, my backup sets, and especially if I do uh, either image backup or uh, file level backup, since I can work with, uh, you know, the, the exclusion, I can actually exclude some objects uh, even from the image based backup. I can look at the picture and uh, I can realize, okay, so there are some data that I don't really need in the program files or I don't really need in, you know, documents folder because that's, you know, either temporary data or the data which can be reproduced easily or data which is just duplication of something which is somewhere else. And, uh, you know, that virtual, uh, capaci that, that virtual uh, capacity tool uh, helps me to break down and to understand what I can exclude. I think, I mean, it, it's not really uh, it's not really key feature, it's not really killer feature, but uh, it's something new that we added into the product and uh, I think it's, uh, you know, very handy and you will find it useful and you'll try to use it on a daily basis. And uh, yeah, we obviously are going to enhance that capability, so we probably will, um, you know, we'll embed that to the backup, so we'll see in the future releases. But for now, it's just a virtual tool that helps you to deal and break down your backups. Yeah, so there is a question, um, you know, which is addressed in my previous slide about ransom, uh, which is actually about ransomware flight and uh, what we actually use for ransomware checking. And as I said, uh, I will be demoing the uh, the client, the 5.8, and uh, I'll try to explain what exactly we do and uh, how exactly we calculate and you know how exactly we address that issue. Thank you for the question. So uh, one more thing. Um, it's all about the uh, it's all about the uh, you know limitations. Not not really limitation, but uh, the disk size, the uh, the maximum disk size that we uh, used to have in the past. And uh, so right now we changed that. Um, it's all about the cases when you need to restore your image based backup into uh, into AWS as EC2 environment, as EC2 virtual machine, or into Azure. Uh, virtual machine, so we used to have one terabyte limitation, and uh, I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about the reason why we had that, but uh, uh, yeah, it's it's obviously the cloud limitation, like cloud provider limitation. But since they uh, introduced uh, larger volumes, like larger disk size, uh, we basically started to support that. So, and right now you're able to restore uh, your image-based backup disks with up to two terabytes if it's MBR. Uh, partition disks or uh, with up to four terabytes if we talk about GPT partition disks. And uh, that's just an example of where we, uh, you know, where we terabyte, the two terabytes disk size. Um, yep, let's move on. Um, so CloudBerry, just to remind you, uh, I know you guys are probably using uh, really intensively the product uh, that we have, but uh, you know, since we talk about backup 5.8, uh, which is designed for uh, for Microsoft Windows, um, you know, we're not really uh, locked on Windows platforms uh, only, so we offer uh, cross-platform backup. So this is actually our slogan: so the cross-platform cloud backup available for Windows, for Linux, and Mac. Uh, there are also two separate things available for, like, you know, in order to help you with uh, application of a backup. So we provide agents for uh, for Microsoft Exchange, just in case if you look uh, for uh, mail server backup, and uh, especially for Microsoft Exchange 2010, uh, we do offer uh, item well restore. So basically, if you uh, run 2010, and if you need to uh, granular uh, restore if you need to discover across your um, exchange mailbox and if it's 2010 once again so you actually can use our tool and it helps you to deliver your missing items directly from the cloud storage so basically we can drill down and get the item well restored uh, for the exchange items and uh, yeah and then final thing uh, which is uh, again for application of a backup is actually SQL so uh, we, uh, we we do support um, Microsoft SQL backup so we offer agent that works, that actually uh, kind of wrapper on top of your SQL server, and it helps you to uh, deliver, uh, you know, to, to, to get your uh, Microsoft SQL databases and everything which is related to the database 
um, you know, kind of production backup. So you can set up production for SQL databases for transaction logs, and then you can deal with uh, those backups, you know, in, in case of accidents, in case of any failures. Yeah, uh, the other thing that I really want to highlight is basically the uh, the tool for uh, the tool for um, for you know like, like data management in the cloud, and uh, that tool we usually call uh, CloudBridge Explorer. It's actually a product name, and uh, it's available for uh, any storage provider that you may run today, uh, from Amazon to Microsoft Azure. Uh, you know, from Google up to CenturyLink or Backplace or Wasabi. So basically, uh, more than 50 storage providers we support today, and CloudBerry Explorer can help you to move objects, uh, you know, back and forth. And uh, I would actually call CloudBerry Explorer really essential thing when you start to work with, uh, you know, object storage when you need to, um, you know, to get something handy that helps you to upload or download your file. So CloudBerry Explorer is kind of, you know, a very cool feature. Cool, uh, cool uh, product. Uh, take a look at that, and it's available in free version as well. By the way, um, and the other thing uh, that I really need to highlight as well, because uh, sometimes you may uh, be a little bit consumed. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm confused. Uh, when you go to the website, you actually. Except if you wish, uh, product lines. Uh, so one is actually designed for consumers or for end users. Uh, so let me give you an example. If you are, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, the, the the guy who wants to uh, get a backup product for your uh, home computer, or you just you know need a product for a few computers like one to three, and you need to, um, you know, to uh, push your backups to the cloud or somewhere else. So basically, you look at the green icons. So uh, it's standalone. Um, known as standalone as well, uh, but the uh, the yellow icon, uh, which you can see here in the screen, is basically a, a, a managed backup product, uh, and it's designed for uh, service providers, for uh, you know IT departments, and when one of your goal is get everything in one place, uh, when you need to uh, to work with your backups, and when you need to get a bird eye view, uh, when you want to uh, control everything from one single place, so basically you. Are looking at the stand um, at the uh, MBS or managed backup service platform, uh, where you generate builds, where you work with, uh, you know, uh, your uh, cross-platform builds available again for Windows, Mac, and Linux, and uh, you manage everything from the storage perspective, from uh, license, from user, from access, you know, from uh, linking all these items together, and uh, you know, MBS is basically a, um, you know service in the cloud, so it's a SaaS or a backup as a service, if you wish, like VAS. And uh, yeah, you don't have to care about any uh, platforms that you need to um, set up in order to work with uh, MBS. So we actually care about that for you. Uh, the only you need to do is sign up on MBS, and uh, you start to generate your builds. You start to uh, work on all these, uh, you know, uh, mixing together like uh, storage account licenses and so on and so forth, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, um, so uh, just to give you an idea about the pricing, um, so first of all, uh, the price works on the agent basis, so you pay per the per product that you install on the computer. And uh, there is a very um, you know, common rule available for all agents that we have. So the more licenses you get, the less you pay. So basically a bulk discount or you know, the wholesale discount basically like available from 10, uh, you know, from the, from the pack of 10 computers up to like 100,000, et cetera. So it depends on your needs. Uh, and you can, again, uh, either go ahead and check the standalone version. I believe uh, there is also bulk discount available on certain calculator that helps you to figure out how much you're going to pay for that. Or if you sign up an MBS platform um, and you jump to the to the license, you know, to the license uh, page of the product, you're going to see the uh, you know the differences between prices depends on the quantity that you're looking at. And uh, yeah, so the, the you know for all products pretty the same uh, license models are per agent, except uh, Virtual Machine Edition, which is not listed here. Uh, but since we have some features introduced for Virtual Machine Edition, I really want to uh, mention Virtual Machine Edition license model as well. So in Virtual Machine Edition, you pay per socket, per socket on, under your um, under your uh, virtual hypervisor, either, either, either uh, VMware ESXi or uh, Hyper-V host, so you 
calculate number of physical CPUs underneath, and uh, then you just uh, you know enable in the product a, a appropriate number of sockets that you need to um, to add into your product in order to uh, protect all virtual machines under the hypervisor or group of hypervisors if we talk about vCenter and a cluster underneath. Um, yeah, let's move on. Actually, it's a demo site. It's a demo part. Um, let me just quickly uh, jump into the Q and A box because I can see there are a few questions. Um, to do, not trying to get off track, but will there be ever any support like CBT for Nutanix hypervisor? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you. I'll put some notes. But for now, uh, the main focus for us is actually Hyper-V and. Uh, and VMware. I mean, these are two hypervisors that we offer support for, and as, as of now, um, that's 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 pretty uh, pretty, you know, custom request. But uh, yeah, thank you very much, and uh, you can additionally get in touch with us uh, through uh, sales at cloudbrewlab.com and remind your query. Uh, so we're going to put you in a system, and uh, we'll keep an eye on that query, and uh, if we see that quite um, often query, so we can implement that in future. Okay, so let me see, uh, okay, there was another question about the uh, methods that we address, uh, that we use for uh, checking either file infected or not, um, so I'll try to explain that in demo. Thank you. Um, any plans for incremental backup for Hyper-V VMs? Thanks, that's a very really nice question. Um, since VMware CBT is kind of native thing, um, in Hyper-V I believe there is no feature available like that. It's probably something that we need to invent or uh, I don't know, like look to the market and maybe there is some libraries available. Now for now, um, that's, that's one of the first, I think it's not really frequent uh, query, but thank you very much. I'll put that note into the system and we'll keep an eye on it. Um, item well recovery for 2017 exchange. Thanks, not supported yet. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 2013. So exchange 2013 item well restore. Uh, yeah, there are some plans maybe next year. Any plans for PostgreSQL? Um, yeah, there are some plans as well. Uh, no ATA yet. Uh, Cloudbrew Explorer for Mac. Um, we have actually a, a web page section on our website uh, where we, um, you know, uh, provide links of uh, links to our partners that you know where you can get the Mac Explorer check. Do you have any options for instance on-site, off-site recovery? We are looking for something to replace our current uh, installation. So this actually depends on uh, what exactly you want. So instance of say, if you talk about the uh, virtual machine backup, and if you talk about virtual machine spinning up from the cloud directly from the backup, this is not something that we can do because uh, that's going to give very slow performance and there are no plans yet. Um, but if you can explain or elaborate a little bit more uh, via sales at collaborate.com, that will be uh, very helpful and we'll try to you know, figure out what you need, and we'll try to address that. Um, I mean, because, uh, for example, we do instant restore for items for Exchange 2010, uh, which is actually directly from the clouds, and it works uh, in, you know, in the way other vendors are doing. So basically, we map uh, the, you know, the, the, you know, the storage to the computer where you have your Exchange 2010, and then, uh, you know, we introduce the uh, database file like EDB file to the exchange box, and then we, uh, you know, kind of offer the item while restore. I mean, it works not exactly that way, but uh, it kind of uh, give, gives you a kind of instant restore because within, you know, a few seconds or, you know, just a few minutes, you can get your items even if we talk about large database. Does the VM backup agent have the ability to truncate exchange SQL logs yet? Uh, no, yet. Uh, so the exchange. And SQL, uh, like agents, they actually have the capability uh, for uh, virtual machine addition now. We don't have that yet because uh, that actually requires the uh, development of uh, uh, in guest agent that will actually handle that for us. And uh, that's actually a very, you know, huge effort that's going to be, uh, you know, a separate line of development. And uh, we don't do that yet. So uh, we only rely on the native VSS. Uh, which is basically triggered by uh, VMware 
uh, VMware tools questions, questions, and uh, you know since vSphere API, uh, since vSphere uh, four, I think it's implemented. And uh, you know if if it's inside and if it's you know Windows operating system inside, that's been triggered automatically. Uh, but not for you know things like Exchange or SQL. So we don't do with uh, those applications or uh, you know the objects that are relevant to those applications. Nothing yet. Uh, does license include the cloud storage? Um, no, we don't sell storage. Um, for MVS users, again, which is managed backup, we offer a demo version. Uh, but uh, I, I mean, it's just really for trying out to see how product works and uh, what capabilities you can get without, you know, adding your information about the storage. And uh, I mean, that's the that's the beauty of the product. Because uh, you are, you are not really locked to our services, you know this is something that we call uh, BYOL, uh, bring your own storage, and uh, you know once you work today with one of these storage, but tomorrow you see the prices going down with other vendor, you just uh, migrate your data and uh, you know you just relink your new storage in our system and you know you keep working. Can I possibly get a recording of this webinar? Uh, yes, you can get. So again, there will be a follow-up email, and you'll get all this information. Any plans to for monthly subscription? I think uh, yeah. So if you have any sales-related questions, I would suggest you to get in touch with our sales team, like sales at cloudreadlab.com, and uh, they will suggest you. How is Hyper-V licenses figured? So it's per uh, again socket. Uh, uh, the only different, uh, like there are two, like one edition, VMware edition and uh, VM edition, sorry, and it supports uh, VMware and Hyper-V. Uh, when in VMware, you can set a backup agent anywhere. It can be a physical box or even a virtual machine within the same cluster, and you just, uh, you know, add information about your vSphere, uh, vCenter, or ESXA box, and you know, using your valid credentials, you get connected and you use vSphere API. And uh, from one location, you can actually talk to your multiple hypervisors and all virtual machines, and then you can set up your plans accordingly. Uh, that's pretty uh, straightforward, and I think uh, many other vendors are doing that the same way. Um, in Hyper-V, it's a little bit different story. Um, so you need to set up the cloud backup agent to the same computer where you have your uh, Hyper-V role enabled, and uh, once set up, you can you know you start with uh, working with uh, the virtual machines and its backups on that computer on that Hyper-V role. Um, and if you have multiple uh, Hyper-V boxes, uh, you basically need to install CloudBreak backup everywhere, like in each uh, Hyper-V computer where you have Hyper-V role enabled. So we are going to change that next year. Uh, and you know back to your question about the license, so you pay per CPU underneath, like you pay per physical CPU that you have under your uh, Hyper-V uh, uh, box. Um, is it per processor? Yeah, that's per physical processor. Uh, CloudBerry backup uh, client has catalog. It is if it maintain the catalog one where it's saved. So um, I think it's uh, just to rephrase the question. Um, you have your data in the cloud, like physically your data either in the cloud or in your local network attached storage or uh, you have uh, j just a bunch of disks like GBOD, right? And you keep your backups right there, but uh, you know that's where you have your physically available data. Now, uh, when we work within um, you know products and the in the UI, you have a backup section. You'll see that backup section, that backup storage section, in a minute. Uh, in that backup section, we don't really fetch your data uh, directly from the storage. Instead, we uh, keep the local repository, uh, which is basically a table and uh, SQLite. And that table, sorry, PostgreSQL, and that table contains metadata about your uh, files in the cloud. And when you start to restore, uh, you, you first, um, I mean, CloudBerry Backup Agent goes first to that uh, metadata, and then you know makes a query to the storage, and then finally makes a restore. You know, the architecture, uh, the the reason why we keep that architecture is that, you know. I mean, it's reasonable um, when we work with the cloud storage, when we work with Amazon or you know Azure or uh, Google Cloud Platform or any other storage, any other storage provider uh, that charge you not only per um, per capacity that you allocate on the storage, but also per API calls that you do towards your account. So uh, if they charge you for that, uh, obviously you don't really want to um, you know to be charged every time when you. 
uh, bleeds per object, and that's the reason why we keep that separate repository because uh, you know it contains metadata, and we only suggest you to rebuild that repository when you see troubles, when you see issues in the country restore. So, but it, yeah, it's it's like a metadata repository, and uh, you can work with that. What happened to the Synology NAS backup application? Is it ever coming back? Yeah, there are some, you know, some uh, debates right now uh, internally. Um, so we're talking to uh, to our vendors guys, and at the same time we're trying to figure out whether, you know, we can deliver uh, robust and uh, much better mature solution. Um, so right now I can't give you any ETA, but yeah, we we probably can come up one day uh, with all those builds. But again, nothing. I can't really promise you anything. And to do okay, so let's move to the demo part. I really do apologize about uh, you know that's you know the time that I spent for uh, for answering questions. Uh, I see people you know some 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 people left. Apologize about that. Probably people would like to see the UI. I hope you can see my uh, you know my screen. Uh, that's actually my remote computer that contains uh, Calibri Backup version five eight. And it has uh, different types of backup plans configured here. So first of all, let's start from the uh, ransomware protection. So uh, maybe I can actually start it from scratch. Yeah, let's actually close that. Don't look at that. Activate Windows. So um, I'm definitely going to do that. That's just a uh, you know, temporary Windows that I want to. Um, now I actually got rid of that splash screen, but I wanted to show you. Uh, the splash screen about ransomware. Uh, when you first time execute it, you're actually going to see that uh, ransomware new feature in a product. But okay, so we actually, um, you know, enable the checkbox to uh, not show up that next time when I launch it. So anyway, uh, that's the new thing that you're going to see in the product. Uh, it's available only for your file level backup. Again, it's not available for image based backup or for. Uh, for virtual machine or for application uh, other backups. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna get into that point. But for now, it's only for file level backup, and it I mean it it, it actually uh, addressed to help you with uh, you know ransoms that you may have on your uh, you know malwares that you may have on your computer. And uh, the main idea of that feature is uh, you know warn you or give you uh, you know a suggestion. Uh, that your uh, files on the source has been changed because you know the ransomware uh, piece of software made some encryption, and um, you know that actually potentially a very big risk. So we can't really, uh, you know, you don't, you probably have to quarantine those files or get rid of those files. So we don't do anything in the clouds. So we don't touch your backups. We don't scan your backups in the cloud or on your destination. Depends on. Uh, your strategy and how exactly you use our product, but we, it's all about the, um, you know, the, the data on the source. Now, there was a question about uh, what exactly we use and how exactly uh, we detect that one. So first of all, uh, we calculate, I mean, every single file and the uh, location of blocks uh, within those files has certain entropy, right? And uh, that entropy might change. And uh, you know there is something in common uh, with uh, all malwares that you may see today, like ransomware uh, tools. Um, they uh, when they do the changes within files, uh, they have something in common. And basically, um, you know, we analyze like every time when we touch your source files, your file level backup, we calculate changes of entropy. And uh, if you see that you know there is something which is really similar to the entropy of the encrypted file, so basically it's all about encryption, right? And if you see that the encrypted file, if, if the file changed towards the uh, you know type or um, you know things that are really common to the encrypted file, uh, we give you a warning, and uh, that's the way how it works. And uh, you know the ransomware protection basically uh, when you enable that. It just uh, you know calculates internally entropy for every single file uh, that you have on your backup set, and uh, if you know we feel that okay something is wrong with that file, so we're going to tell you about that. Um, if we scroll down um, and uh, yeah, if we scroll up, um, your your ransomware protection enabled backup set is marked with uh, 
you know, the, you, the, the icon uh, that actually indicates that, okay, so that, that backup set is protected by ransomware. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about the uh, virtual machine backup and uh, about the VMware, okay? So that's my sample of uh, virtual machine VMware backup. And again, uh, pretty the same visa uh, that we usually uh, walk through when we configure virtual machine backup. And uh, so one of the steps here uh, where we select, okay, so we define uh, what server we want to work with. So basically that's my vSphere and that's my uh, payer of credentials. And when we see the list of all virtual machines, uh, one of the flag here is use change block tracking. So it's keep an eye on the option. So by default, it's disabled. Uh, it's just, you know, uh, we still, you know, think that we are pretty good in terms of our personal, you know, own technology for analyzing change blocks. But if you really want to use CBT or change block tracking, you can actually enable that and try with uh, incremental backup run. So you're gonna see a huge difference comparing to what you had in the past, just in case if you use our product. Again, uh, it's part of vSphere API. Uh, it's part of VMware technology. One of the question was in Q&A box that I already addressed uh, is about Microsoft Hyper-V. Uh, we'll keep on. will take more time in terms of development because it's uh, something that we need to invent. So basically, it's something that we need to calculate, keep somewhere, and then address uh, during incremental backup. So for VMware, it's much easier because it's just a part of the API calls and uh, we just fetch that table directly from VMware. And uh, yeah, keep an eye. So that's a new checkbox right here and it helps you to, uh, to uh, make your incremental backup faster, up to 10 or 20 times. Now, uh, I also talked about the uh, tool for, uh, you know, for making the disk, you know, for, for visualizing the disk capacity. Um, so it's right there. Uh, it's right here on the tools. And if you go to disk capacity, so you're gonna have a separate tab, uh, which actually shows you all the available volumes. Um, so I'm looking at the C drive and if we retrive, so that's gonna fetch all the uh, C drive objects kind of discovery thing. And uh, then I can see all the, uh, you know, all the things and break down uh, of, all, of all these things on the C folder, on the C, on the C destination. And uh, what I can do, I can open up it or I can drill down and, you know, keep, you know, make uh, the further breakdown, I can see, you know, what exactly I have. Again, um, this is, you know, not pretty, you know, not really obvious where exactly you potentially can use that, uh, but I actually found it really useful, uh, at least uh, for image-based backup. And again, if you, if I can just quickly walk through the image-based backup for you. So if you, image-based backup, if you create an image-based backup user, um, one of the steps allows us to exclude files and folders. And that's really cool because uh, you may want your entire system back up on the destination, but you actually keep some, you know, user's profiles and you want to exclude those user's profiles from your backup set. So what you can do, uh, first of all, you can analyze your uh, disk capacity and see the breakdown of all folders uh, within your system. And then you can go to the uh, image-based backup and exclude certain files. So for example, I don't want to back up my user's folder and I don't want to back up that NFS. And I also don't want to back up my inet pop folder. So that's it. So I just put those, you know, three elements into the exclusions because, uh, you know, I don't really need them. Uh, I mean, obviously you can do that in the regular explorer, but, uh, you, know, what, you know, what if it's just available right here? So if you can make a breakdown of this capacity. Okay, so this is useless. I'm not gonna use it. I'm not gonna put it into the backup. You go back to your image-based backup user and you just uh, make all these changes accordingly. And uh, yeah, so final thing that I mentioned as well, uh, it's all about the restore of uh, uh, image-based backup. So again, let's go back to uh, restore. And uh, it's all about the images and the restore of image-based backup to the cloud. So we're gonna restore from image-based backup right now. We're gonna use the latest version we're gonna use the, um, the restore EC2 EBS EMI, and then we're gonna use EC2 restore, 
So this actually uh, means that I will do a restart of uh, my image based backup of my local computer uh, into Amazon environment as EC2 virtual machine or EC2 instance. And uh, if I make uh, a selection of the accounts, and if I say that I want to use, uh, let's say, something like that, I mean, don't look at that. <laughs> That's a P type of instance. I mean, it's just random pick. Um, and I want to use default, so I go next. And uh, it's just an architecture. It does make any sense right now, because uh, the main thing that I want to show you is the target size of your volume. If we switch to terabyte, so that's going to give us roughly two terabytes just because this is MBR. And if you remember for GPT, so we do offer four terabyte support uh, for the destination. So yeah, that's that's available for Amazon and the same available for Azure. Um, yeah, feel free to check it out. And, uh, and uh, that's really it. Um, I'm going to quickly jump into QA box, see if there are any questions arrive. Oops. Okay. So there is a question if Amazon backup uses a proprietary method or can do a native PC2 snapshot. That's a pretty cool question. Uh, let me quickly jump into my uh, EC2, I'm um, sorry, into my uh, into my um, MBS account. So just want to show you a very cool feature uh, that we also uh, introduced but a bit earlier, not really in Fiber 8. Uh, super quickly. So basically it's uh, easy to snapshot. Yeah, it's all about the EC2 snapshot. Uh, I'll probably better explain that. It's all about the EC2 snapshot. So we introduced the way to uh, make a, a scheduled snapshot for certain, you know, list of EC2, um, EC2 instances. And uh, well, the EC2 snapshot is well, it's kind of uh, you know backup alternative. Um, but you know, the agent that you have, you know, you 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 see here, it works with uh, you know in guest data, right? So it works actually on the Operating system layer, and uh, you know, basically helps you to protect certain you know files or even the entire image, and then you know you can convert that image to um, you know certain ways like either physical volume, like physical disk, or another EC2 instance, or uh, just make a file level backup and you know different type of things. So I would encourage you to uh, take a look at the image-based backup and compare that image-based backup to EC2 snapshots. Um, so there is a question, can I move licenses from one computer to another? Yes, you can. You just need to get in touch with our sales team. They will help you. Uh, but I think it's all about the release license and assign that license again back to the computer. So there is a question if I have a storage, can I switch a storage? Uh, if I have a client data backup stored on AWS and is it possible to copy data from AWS to another storage provider via Cloud Re or directly? Yes, it is. There is Cloud to Cloud feature. Uh, it's available in standalone products. Yeah, just make sure that you download standalone products from our website and it helps you to do Cloud to Cloud replication of your data. You know, like you can basically have exactly the same structure, exactly the same files on the other storage on the other provider. Am I right in thinking you're staying for next year? We will only need to see the license that will back up Hyper-V. So uh, I would suggest you to uh, address your license questions to our sales team. They will, you know, help you with. Uh,
Uh, yeah, so the uh, as, as far as I know, uh, there is a question, what ransomware platform program technology have you licensed? Or is it completely developed in-house? So yeah, it's uh, in-house development. Uh, it's something that we invented. And again, it's all about the calculation of entropy of the file and it changes. And we compare with uh, some ethylons that we uh, feel that, you know, that might be encrypted file and the entropy changed and we warn you, uh, we give you an idea, okay, so you don't probably need to back up those files because they're encrypted. So uh, there is a question, does Cloudbreak keep previous versions in the cloud? And if so, how many days versions stayed? Yeah, it's part of the retention policy and you can actually configure that uh, based on uh, your requirements. So you can go ahead and set the retention policy, the number of versions that you need to keep in the cloud and based on that, we're gonna approach your data. So there is a question, uh, advanced free branding doesn't yet offer ransomware protection as default in the branding. Uh, will that be available? We don't have to check the checkbox for every user. Uh, yeah, please get in touch with us. Uh, we'll try to figure out what's going on wrong. Some vendors have to do. So there is some vendors tag protected files by changing the icon to the user. Um, so the user could see a green checkbox or similar on the show and it's protected. Any plans for this? Yeah, that's really good feedback. Thank you. I have noted and uh, we'll consider it. I mean, uh, the, the stack with ransomware that we made earlier uh, for 5.8 is really first iteration that we want to you know, uh, give you guys and, you know, we want to see the feedback. So if you see that's really, um, you know, valuable for you, if you see it helps you so much with uh, your daily uh, challenges and with uh, just in case you catch any uh, malware by your systems and if it helps you very much, so that's great. So give us a feedback and, uh, you know, give us a feedback with uh, through the enhancements and we're going to change that for sure. So there is a question: How we detect that if the file is infected? Yeah, I think I'll, 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 I have already answered that question. So it's all about the uh, calculation of entropy of the file, and if uh, you know there are ch changes in the file, so we actually notify user about that. Is there a support number that we can call and talk to the technical guys? Yes, on website. Please check our website and find out the contact details on website. Is the retention option, yes. Uh, is the retention period option for uh, ECT snapshot backup? Yes, in MBS there is a snapshot manager for EC2 instances and yeah, check it out and uh, you'll see all these options available. Does MBS support Microsoft SQL SQL always on? Um, that's a tricky question. Uh, it supports Microsoft SQL. Um, yeah, get in touch with us and uh, we'll double check that for you. Is it going to be available for streaming? Yeah, I believe we'll follow up with, um, you know, email later and uh, we'll be able to review the webinar. So with that in mind, uh, that's all what I have for you today. And uh, I want to thank you very much for uh, being today in the webinar. And if you have any questions, um, just get back to us over, uh, you know, sales at cloudberrylab.com and we'll be able to assist you further. So thank you very much once again and have a great week. Bye-bye.